Peace be upon you, brothers. I wonder if any of you guys have heard of this is an interesting theory. Really, it's not a theory. I believe it's true. It's a fact. They call it a conspiracy theory, but it's called the dead internet theory. The dead internet theory, which is essentially a hypothesis or supposition that, and supposedly the, the claim is that the internet died around 2016 or 2017. So in the early years of the internet, I'm sure all of you are familiar with this, perhaps even more than me because you're older. In the early years, internet was largely driven by user-based content. The fate of the internet was dictated by the users. But ever since these major information tech giants bought out all of the big companies, all of the big websites that people are using, everything just feels homogenized and stale. And what's the word I'm looking for? Like assembly line, the internet has lost its uniqueness, it's lost its human feel, it just feels like robotic, and that's the best way I can describe it, as stale. And this dead internet theory is essentially that m most of what you see on the internet, including YouTube videos, popular channels, music, <laughs> uh, comments on your Facebook wall, com uh, let's say you have a post that comes up on your Facebook and you see most of the comments underneath there, the artwork, the digital images, the music, pretty much the majority of the internet's activity that you're seeing is not actually from real people, but it's all through bots and algorithms to persuade you to think a certain way, to persuade you, persuade you to buy a certain product and to manipulate your mind. We're, we're not actually... In, in most cases with the internet, obviously you have some cases, brother, you could, I could comment on brother Igor's Sola Quran channel, you can comment on my, uh, the way of Abraham channel, but most of what we're seeing on the internet in terms of YouTube comments, Facebook comments, posts, music, content, is, is not actually us interfacing with the outside world, but us in our own curated bubble of bots and algorithmic manipulation. I wonder what you guys think of that. That dead internet theory is very, very interesting. I think that's true, especially now with ChatGPT and the development of all of this AI. I think the majority of what we're seeing on the internet is not even real content, real comments by real people. It's just a bubble that's been made for us to manipulate our opinions and thoughts and make us think of the world in a certain way. Peace be upon you, man. So I've never really heard exactly the dead internet theory. However, uh, on the other side of the coin, I've heard of you know these corporations these large corporations that purchased like youtube instagram which eventually you know also uh, the guy who made facebook ended up selling his his uh his ownership his ownership rights to facebook and then now uh you know there's something called meta because it's much more controlled than it was back in the early 2000s uh, in the early 2000s, I remember, like, let's say, 2006, there was no there was no campaign ads. You could use the internet a lot more freely, a lot less censorship. Um, but now, obviously, because these big corporations got their hands on all the, the, the Google search engine, they own Google, they own YouTube. And, and actually, if you look at Yahoo Finance, you're going to see that the big corporations like uh, BlackRock and Vanguard own all of these, uh, all these, all these uh, internet corporate or all these in internet engines. Like, and unfortunately, they they obviously monetize it and they control it and they they exactly control what will be on there and what's not on there. They have a whole corporation, obviously, controlling whether it's going to be censored or what's not censored, etc. Right? Whatever you type in will show up. What will not show up. However. Um, that being said, you know, I'm sure we can all uh, depict what what is the truth and what's not the truth. Even those those corporations like Vanguard and BlackRock, I think it was actually BlackRock that has the rights. They're the ones who actually own Pfizer, they own Moderna, and all the the different vaccines that were released. Ironically, these are the same kind of people who have connections to the Rockefellers. The Rockefellers are very evil people. And overall, we know the, the, Rockefeller, the Rockefeller Foundation, these are all attached. All these people have uh, the ownerships to these.
these evil things. And and it, and also, even with Walt Disney, Walt Disney has, you know, we I'm sure we all know that uh, Walt Disney owns Disney, obviously, and he's the founder of Disney. And um, you know, there's a whole controlled narrative right there, of course, with what our children consume, and it's just it's bizarre. However, uh, yeah, the internet is well dead. AI is already taking over. You can use ChatGPT. You can just create content using AI. Um, just everything. The world of AI, the new world order is a part of it. AI is going to, well, quote unquote, the new world order AI is supposed to take over. But obviously, I, we both, all of us here know better that through a law, none of, a law controls all of this. So, you know, all praise goes to the Lord. And uh, anyways, I appreciate you all listening to that. I just wanted to respond to that voice memo that you said, Wally, that's that's a good message. And uh, it's very true. It's very true. Anyways, man, peace be upon you. Yeah, brother. Uh, of course, we, we see the influence of these nefarious companies. But it goes, the dead internet theory, it goes even deeper than just saying, hey, they put these talking heads, they... You know, people who sell out to their system and they make their videos popular. What if the majority of what we're seeing isn't even real people? That is very well a possibility. And um, I think at least for your algorithm, my algorithm, Brother Kenneth's, Brother Igor's, ours is largely real because remember, we're in a very small space. Our searching activities are not like the mainstream you know, most people are doing. We watch Quran alone, theology, flatter, things like that, You're talking about God and religion. Most people aren't searching that, so I would reckon, I would assume that most of our content is fairly real for the most part That in our feeds, but I'm talking about what the majority are following. Sports, entertainment, music, these really, really popular channels on YouTube, the, the kind of normie tier search activities. I think what most of these people are seeing is bots, AI produced content, AI produced comments, AI produced music. Why, why would the ruling elite miss out on this opportunity if they had the, and they do, we know they have this kind of AI technology. If they have the ability to literally manipulate your entire reality and make you think you're interfacing with the outside world when really it's just a an onslaught of bots that are surrounding you with fake stuff, why would they not do that? That seems like a really good way to control people's mind. And we know they have this technology. I'm going to send this stuff into the chat right now. They're, they can make literally by if you run my face through an AI bot, they can actually make videos that speak like me, sound like me, talk like me, this whole thing of a deep fake. They can do that. They, they can even make diss tracks. I'm going to send this in the chat. There's a, a song that was recently released and it wasn't actually made by Drake you know, the, the rapper Drake, the Canadian rapper. But actually the song was made by AI, but it sounds like it was made by Drake. If nobody told you it was made by AI, you would think it's by Drake, but he never made this song. But they copied his voice, his timber, his style, his rhyme scheme, everything. And there's another website, I'm gonna link it here as well. It's called, I think it's called thispersondoesnotexist.com. And basically that website, it, it keeps producing AI images of fake people. None of the, you can keep clicking refresh endlessly, 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 and see face after face after face after face. And none of these people are real. They're all AI, but they look completely realistic. And you can even, j just to make sure that they're not lying to you, they're not just pulling some random Facebook photo in from some guy in Afghanistan. You can, there are ways to do image searches on the internet. You can search by image. You have an image and then you put it through the engine and it, it finds where the image is on the internet. Oh, there's this Facebook profile that has that image in Afghanistan or whatever. No, you can do that with all of the millions of images that this website, this person does not exist.com, and you will find no traces of it on the internet. These are literally made up AI generated faces that look real. So we know they have this technology. So why not curate and make a perfectly artificial world around the common man and have him think it's real? It just 
if I was an evil satanic ruling elite, I wouldn't pass up on that opportunity. Certainly they have put the system into place and I, I think the dead internet theory is real. The majority of the activity that most people are experiencing is bots. And it's not just for people like you and I who search risky content, conspiracy theory content, stuff that is threatening to their establishment. Everybody has noticed that the search engines, they don't work the way like they used to. They don't work like they did in 2008, 2010, 2011. There's something fundamentally broken and wrong with the search engines. You type in certain keywords and it spits out very select curated content that it wants you to watch. You in, in the past, when you searched for something, you would actually find that thing you're looking for. But now you find the same products, the same YouTube videos, the same content being spit out to you. There's something obviously manufactured and artificial and Walmart-like if I should say, yeah, Walmart-like of the internet. And it wouldn't be surprising to me, like I said, if all of this mainstream content, which just keeps getting spit back at you, which is AI produced. That's a very good point, brother. Unfortunately, I, I just feel like, just to add on to what we're talking about, I just feel like people don't like to think big. Thinking big is scary to most people, but you have to face the fear. And, and the fear of failure, neglect, of you being alone, all these things you have to face the requirements. Like for me, how, you know, I I had a conversation with Allah one time and I told him that I was willing to neglect and give up anything in the life for the pursuit of truth. So at that moment, I was willing to like sacrifice my life in the pursuit of truth. And at that moment, blessings came and, and things came from a place of humility, but and I, I was someone who was also teachable and, and, and coachable and, and always had an open mind and, and listening to, to the truth. And um, I, I, I'm, I know that um, I'm somebody who wants to be as close to Allah as possible. And, uh, you know, just to add on regarding the, the AI, like, I, I know that, you know, it, it's definitely very much deeper. The, the American system is, is designed to take advantage of the ignorance. And um, people have all this static in their mind. Like, you know, we, we all know that the crowd mind is not a rational mind. Therefore, like, they don't appeal to logic. They appeal to emotion. They appeal to fear. And uh, I, I think that for some reason, humans are the only species out of sync. Like, if you look at every other animal, they're doing what they're supposed to do. We're the only ones out here like buying, you know, designers, spending money on things, trying to impress people. It's like, what are we, what are we trying to do? Like, we got to, you know, relax a little bit. And, you know, the only thing, we have nothing to prove. The only thing we have to do is, is live righteous, you know, do good deeds and, and be as close to Allah as possible by living a pure life and, and, and a fruitful life with true meaning. Heeding the warning to others who want to listen and, and, and doing the right thing. That's what really matters. Like nothing that, that we, we are doing, or sorry, I should say that all the money that, you know, we have is not going to last forever. Let's say like if, if we have a lot of money, like these people think that they're going to have a whole bunch of money, which will last forever. It's, it's not like all the money that, that you have isn't going to last. And so you know, when people come to me with all this fear and anxiety of not having or, ha or, or having or not having accomplished um, from what my experience, they have no understanding of the finite nature of life. Like, you're here today, could be gone tomorrow. You know, leave some impact. Make sure you love Allah. Do righteous, good deeds, and, and really build your relationship with Allah because this life is only temporarily this life is temporarily and you know you want to make sure you're as close to Allah as possible and heed the warning and all, all of us brothers of course know that it's just a lot of people get confused and they don't use their mind per se you know that Allah has blessed them with to to speak the truth and, and understand things you know um, and in a life you need to strive for abundance and to be complete and I just want to add on here, I think that uh, most people 
have a narrow worldviews. They do have uh, narrow worldviews because they have pessimistic perspectives. So they can only see the world through a vacuum, a lack of information. And, and you're right, with the, the AI and the internet now being controlled compared to 2008, the, this was all done on purpose. And, um, you know, the lack of information now, it's just the same stuff that keeps popping up in the search engine. And, you know, the more, the more that I know, the more that I can see, the more that I can see, the better perspective I can have. And the better perspective I can have, the better outcome I can have for my decision making in life. You know, I I believe it's important to learn skill sets that will allow you to become into intuitive and to become, you know, you know, make some money the right way with not obviously uh, taking loans and doing interests and, and, you know, there's there's ways to do this and, and you know, Honestly, I think that you, you nailed it. Um, I think that finance is the language of the elite. And, you know, I remember because, uh, you know, I came before the Quran alone. I, I came from the, the Christian ministry. And what I remember is back in the day, I remember, like, the church would block people's access from God. And Why? they wouldn't let people speak in latin therefore they couldn't read the bible so what would happen is that they would have to go through a middleman today you want to go through a middleman perfect there's your banker because you don't know finance you don't know law perfect here's your lawyer it's like come on what is that it's like you always need another person representing or because you don't do not understand how the world really works and they obviously have no connection with the law and 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 no true guidance so it, it's unfortunate, but like you really want to use the time to you know educate yourself and, and build your relationship. Mainly, the number one thing is to build your relationship with Allah. And uh, anyhow, I, I just wanted to mention that. Yeah, peace, brothers. Uh, thanks so much for the lovely conversation. Um, I remember watching a video by uh, Truth Stream Media years ago. And they basically proved that if you Google anything right now, you will get billions of results, but you actually never get anywhere near to all the pages of those results. So let's say like, if you search, you know, I don't know, like anything, really any topic, you're going to get maybe the first 20 or 30 pages and that's it. That's not even a dent in the amount of results that it finds. So basically, most of the internet is actually gone. And you have to really know specifically what you're looking for in order to even salvage part of it. Because like you said, everything is catered right now to, you know, how specific you can make your search. And if it's not specific enough, then basically, you know, you're just going to get their propaganda. The other thing, too, I noticed, uh, which is something interesting, is how many active subscribers are there? Like, how many channels that are actually people are on YouTube? So, for example, um, you can go to YouTube and see the most subscribed channels possible. And you get maybe, like, over 100 million subscribers for really the top tier channels. Uh, Mr. Beast, PewDiePie, and all that. And... Really, if you think about it, there's supposed to be 7 billion people. Pretty much everybody, I would say over 90% of people have access to the internet via smartphone or whatever for a while now. Why isn't that number any higher? Why aren't the number of channels higher? Because anybody can make a YouTube channel. It's very simple. Um, even when you turn on the news, they all say like, they kind of gaslight you and say in the news like, oh, see this protest, there were like 5 million people in this protest. Or there were like, uh, I don't know, whatever. 2 million fans for this hockey game. But in actuality, you can do a bit of like kind of math 
and estimate how many people would there be based on how much area they tend to occupy. I think it's called Fermi math. And you'll find the number is way, way, way lower than what they claim. I don't know why they do that, but when you look at, let's say, all the countries in the world, um, just pick any country, pick Canada, pick America, pick Germany, pick whatever you want, and take the top 10 cities, the highest population. You're not gonna find even half, you're lucky to find half the population in the top most populated cities. So that assumes that everyone else lives in the rural areas, which is very unlikely. There's less and less people outside of the major cities, by definition. You drive around here uh, in Ontario, it's just empty farmland, basically. So much empty space. Everybody is concentrated. So it looks like people are overpopulated, but really people are actually underpopulated. And it kind of makes sense looking around the world how much of the world has been devastated by, uh, I would suggest, uh, divine calamities. So... You think about, you know, the Georgia Guidestones when they were available, they said to keep humanity 500 million in balance with nature. And it wouldn't surprise me if that is the actual population of Earth, of all the humans on it. Just take factor in all the vaccines, factor in the homosexuality, factor in, you know, the world wars, the various um, epidemics and all kinds of resources at their disposal, abortions, uh, reduced, you know, birth rates and everything. Um, it really, really is like, there's no way we went from 1 billion in 1900 and 7 billion in 2000. There's just, there's absolutely no way. Um, and that's why I think that um, they're, they've just been jacking up the numbers so much. It's like how they have kind of gaslit us into this tiny little world when really, um, if you just look at how the globe is constructed, they've They've made all the latitudes artificial. The entire northern hemisphere is a lot bigger than it is. You can just look up uh, anywhere, like, you know, um, true true size of continents. And you're going to see very quickly that it's actually like a conspiracy. They've made the continents uh, <laughs> fake, fake sizes. Australia, South America, Antarctica, um whatever that is, and then obviously Africa are way, way, way bigger than Canada, Russia, uh, Europe, definitely, America. Even Brazil is so much bigger. Even Arabia is bigger than most countries. So why do they do that? They, why do they inflate the world? And why do they sh inflate the Northern Hemisphere and shrink the Southern Hemisphere? To, you know, give you a fake um, representation of reality. Going to the fake accounts and all the AI and trolling and all that stuff, that's very easy to do because um, these gins have way more sway now. Probably they have in the past, but now they're just very comfortable with the advent of modern technology, which is really just like a fake version of... Uh, it's like a dumbed-down version of ancient technology. So I think that everyone's always, always had these kinds of like scrying mirrors where they can communicate via... I mean... Basically, these jinn creatures are kind of like a conduit for energy and trans, um, you know, teleportation, transportation, communication, all sorts of things, anti-gravity, because of the nature of their constitution. Like, they're actually made from these electromagnetic kind of forces, right? Um, you know, so it wouldn't surprise me that, you know, when you look at, like, electronic circuit boards and stuff, they look very much like demonic sigils for summoning. And it wouldn't surprise me that this technology just employs them all the time. Very similar to the story of Suleiman in the Quran, where he he basically chains the devils to, you know, exploit their abilities as jinns. And that's why so much of that time period was way more advanced than we can imagine. And they're kind of we kind of live in a pseudo version of that, except the beings are now at the top and we simply kind of get a little bit of privileges <laughs> for being in the system but you know clearly clearly uh there is no way like the internet exists without some kind of a sentience you know um i think 
in the past it was just kind of a dumbed down version but it's almost like they flipped the switch and these things just have taken over probably around 2015 i would say when you started to see more chat bots become kind of quote unquote self-aware it's not really they're self-aware they just uh, i think like the algorithm allows them to express themselves more in a way um yeah i mean they give us a kind of stupid version of this like with like the robot in saudi arabia called sophia which is basically a puppet like it's not actually an ai or anything but um yeah a lot of these apps a lot of these things like they do employ some kind of intelligence that very easily quickly masterfully um organizes and gets information to the person interested right which we could never do it would take us ages to even approach that so it speeds things up because you see their conception of time is very different to ours um their time is a lot slower where they're from there's way more of them that's why they live longer um yeah the quran gives you just all the gems that you can just investigate the world around you but yeah I, I do think that the world has been underpopulated this is kind of part and parcel with the pharaonic kind of depopulation agenda like you know how he was killing the sons of Beni Israel, um, which would constitute basically humanity at this time and yeah I mean clearly uh Pharaoh had his own gods just exclusively for him so that he can uh, enact their will. Um, this could be why, you know, San Garens maybe got to the idea that uh, the jinns are not aliens, but they're kind of like um, elites. They certainly have an elite status in our world, given their prowess in reality. However, they do have things, they don't have things that we possess. Um, and that's part of why they have to suppress that part of our nature as much as possible. Um, but that's awakening at the moment, and I don't think they are very friendly to uh, people like us, uh, given that, you know, God guides whom he wills, and he <laughs> he's not interested in playing games. Um, he tells you everything exactly like it is. And um, woe to the deniers away with the wrongdoing people but i think that's a major player i think that many of the bots we're seeing these ai accounts that argue with this talk to us they could very well be these unseen jinn tapping into this unseen technology of the internet and the wireless world and that that is the way in which they are choosing to manifest themselves but pretending to be people we know this is what the jinn do they pretend iblis pretended to be an angel in the garden and he deceived adam thereby they're good pretenders they gaslight you when they whisper in your brain all kinds of satanic provocations and suggestions they make you think it's you you're thinking those bad thoughts that this is some sickness inside of your heart but really it's just something outside of you that's pretending to be you they're good pretenders so maybe they're also pretending to be people and making online accounts and trolling us and when you think of it in that way it it really shows just how important it is for us to get off the internet put the internet down once we've received all of the important information that we need to receive put the internet down put the phone down and start organizing with people in real life you are in an echo chamber and you're not even talking to real people you're not even watching real people or hearing real people it is a satanic echo chamber designed to keep you in an illusory world that's amazing that you mentioned that brother igor because um, wouldn't that be something we already know this internet and online wireless technology, it definitely pertains to the unseen. It's the unseen realm, it's al ghaib and the jinn pertain to the unseen as well. Would it not be interesting if we were perhaps that, that fake online world we're in when we go on the internet, this massive gaslight where again, we think we're interacting with the world, but really it's just AI bots. Could it be unseen jinn tapping into this wireless technology and communicating with us, trolling us on a mass scale, gaslighting us on a mass scale. You'll see it's, it, it goes deeper than fake comments. It's, it's, I'm talking f fake videos, AI content, AI music, AI everything. 
and it, it obviously trolling is definitely a part of it as well you go to any video about flat earth anything anything true anything real and you'll see there's always somebody underneath these videos commenting and saying oh my uncle's best friend was an astronaut he actually did work on the international space station and obviously this is a troll this is either an ai bot or you're likely arguing with somebody when you see the back and forth in these comment sections you're, you're, you're probably just arguing with some dude in china in some government computer office area just made he's being paid to troll you you're not actually arguing with a real person either a it's just some paid agent or b it, it's probably more likely a bot and it makes more sense what it, it makes actually more sense from their perspective why they would put all these bots in front of us arguing with bots and bot made content robot made content because they don't have to pay anybody to make this stuff they could just literally have this automated arguing system automated trolling system automated content system which is perfectly subservient to them which will never whistle blow or say any insider knowledge or expose them it's actually the the perfect move to create an ai world around us because again ai doesn't go a wall it doesn't expose you it doesn't need any persuasion it just perfectly obeys the master programmer um, something I wanted to add maybe further. Um, you guys have probably noticed this as well. Um, that when I was a kid, the comedy, you know, I, I used to watch like stand up comedy and stuff like that. And it seemed like uh, things were really like funnier not too long ago, maybe a decade or two ago. And there was more subtlety, there was more kind of creativity in the scenarios, even like sketch comedy and sitcoms and stuff. And ever since then, I don't know what happened. I think since the kind of whole Netflix uh, fiasco with Amy Schumer and everything, it's just been downhill ever since. There, There is literally nothing like you could probably find here and there something. But overall, the entertainment industry is... A dinosaur like it's it's dead it, it's terminally ill and this has been in the plot devices for films and the in the kind of um scripts for even the news everything about it it just seems feels more consolidated to a psychotic mind you know that's very uncreative very un inhuman a good example of this is the mainstream media the kind of conglomerate news stations you're probably aware of that infamous clip that the conan o'brien show made popular as if it wasn't a subtle hint enough literally he collected all the local tv stations pretty much and he realized just to show a collage of how they have the exact same script like from alabama to nebraska to freaking california to new york oh these these kinds of fake news are very dangerous to our democracy. It's very dangerous to our democracy. And they keep saying the same line over and over again, even for stupid stuff like, oh, uh, Tom Hanks hit, or um, Mike Myers has a new baby. Oh, yeah, baby. Or Like, they literally say the same lines. And it's like, even down to that, and nobody would have known if they didn't present it to you to mock you that, hey, we've always controlled your news, at least in the modern era. And they're all just reading off of one stupid script. So it's like, okay, there's a mind at play. And this mind doesn't like humans. You can imagine who this mind is. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it's really, it's really down to the fact that human creativity is one of its most treasured... Um, attributes gifts really and you'll notice that like that is literally taken out of you the more that you go through the schooling system uh, the more that you go in the workplace even they just want to squash that they actually have this term called uh, tall poppy syndrome they use it a lot in australia and it means if there's a really gifted person in a classroom that's like really creative intelligent uh, rational uh, thinking outside the box, they make sure to cut him down so he's kind of homogenized to the rest of the classroom. 
And this is a basically the larger world at play. We have this alien invasion. And this alien invasion has a uh, commander called Iblis. And for whatever reason, Allah allows all of this since the time of Adam. Um, because I guess it, it fulfills a higher purpose, right? For human destiny. And I'll tell you right now, like, the biggest threat to this hyper-intelligence called jinn, specifically the satanic ones, is human creativity. The ability for humans to find an escape route anywhere they happen to be locked in. We're not that intelligent compared to them. We're not that good. At, our memories are not that good compared to them. So, yeah, there's actually a movie that uh, highlights that. I'm just going to find it. And if you haven't watched this movie, I recommend it if you like uh, sci-fi. But it's uh, interesting, to say the least. Yeah, brother, I have noticed that. We've all noticed that where entertainment has just taken a nosedive. The, the writing is so stale, so drab, uninspired. And it seems that this is one of the quintessential features of mankind creativity now i know god in the quran says he's the only one who creates but we we don't create but we can use what god has given us to form something amazing something interesting something new we're reformers we're you know god taught our father the names the names i mean he he has given us this knowledge that even the jinn don't possess and we see this we see this now with the degrading of all entertainment and the creativity taken out the soul. It feels so stale and without any life. These, all these movies and their plots, they could very well have been written by AI. Jin slash AI, pretty much it seems like the same thing. The two are interchangeable. They could have been written by robots. These actors, they don't even have to be on the screen. It could just be AI generated. Everything, it, it's... It, it, like I said, it brings a reality to perspective. Whenever you're dealing with the online world, you need to consider, am I dealing with a real human being or something that was inspired by a human being or a bot? Even it goes into news articles. All the news articles, they're written in the exact same way. They talk about the exact same stuff. We know ChatGPT can write articles. You can say, hey, ChatGPT, write me an article on, I don't know, uh, rising crime rates in Toronto. And it'll write you an article in whatever style you want. Chat GPT. I'm sure that the ruling elite, they have way more sophisticated AI programs than just Chat GPT. They give us kind of the, the dumbed down crude versions. They have extremely sophisticated versions, which are obviously not available for the public. And are, are these news articles? Basically, is everything you're seeing on the internet just a, a massive tsunami of robot content? Really something to consider. Yeah, I was going to say also, brothers, uh, that um, I um, used to watch a lot of um, this guy from Australia called Max Egan. And, you know, he's like an older gentleman from uh, Brisbane, uh, New South Wales. And I I think actually uh, Queensland or New South Wales, I'm not sure. But basically, uh, yeah, I, he kind of really started a lot of my awakening in high school to the fact that basically the whole system is fraudulent and corrupt from the very core. Um, and there is this kind of elevation in consciousness. Um, he doesn't really take the kind of God angle that the Quran does, unfortunately. But I remember like seeing his journey come to like, you know, through COVID and everything, how things just became a bit more crystallized that uh, there is a creator, there is a connection to God that every human has at any point in their lives if they choose to, you know, if they choose to acknowledge that, let alone connect with it. And he was saying something, I remember there's a mainstream article right around during coronavirus and basically most of the internet is just bots, it's just trolls. It's just um, AI, like it's it's just automatic kind of responses, um, whatever, via some algorithms or anything like that. 
And that's why I think, you know, it makes a lot of sense, this kind of invasion theory of the Internet being co-opted from maybe not its earliest days, but at least when it started to become actually very useful with the advent of social media. Uh, because before social media, I mean, uh, you didn't really get this kind of real-time communication, access, um, collaboration, you know, like meeting of the minds, exponentially increasing in intelligence because you now can search whatever you want at your fingertips you can talk to anyone in the world and get instant access to basically like hadith <laughs> reports from anywhere. Uh, near instant access. So I think it's been co-opted um, very much uh, e easy to see, I think, after COVID. Um, and I still have a lot of questions about COVID because for whatever reason, it, it just, it kind of dawns on you after the fact that there's this kind of controlled demolition um, of society, particularly in the West, but I think all over the world, in fact. And when something is too easy to see, you have to question why would they even allow any of this to be out if they didn't have an ulterior motive and yeah it kind of it kind of makes sense you know like if if they had created this uh, let's just say like a weapon right that you inject into your arm and this weapon removed an entire generation of people that lived or were born shortly after World War II. That's an entire set of knowledge removed in living memory. And their sons and daughters are not much better off. Um, I'm getting ahead of myself here, but the point being is um, whatever this enemy is, because remember, Trump's words during that ordeal, that live... Uh, what is it? <laughs> a live test or something. They, I remember they called it like a live demonstration or something like that. It was that we are fighting the invisible enemy. And there is no virus, clearly. There is no isolation at all of this, or any virus for that matter. But there is an invisible enemy. And I would suggest that at any point, any moment, wherever you are, uh, these things are defined by their concealment. They're masters of camouflage and evading detection. And every now and then, you'll notice in your personal life or you'll notice, you know, some of these people in the world on TV, they have like this uh, very clear element of control over them, like an otherworldly, supernatural. It's really just a different type of phenomena. I, don't, I wouldn't call it supernatural. It's a nature that's undetectable by our instruments, really. Um, but it is part of a different world. And that's something that um, like we can never stop talking about. Um, I feel when you start to point the finger at the real enemy, and not really the finger at the kind of enemies they set up for you where it's like, oh, this particular race or this particular religion or this... No, all that stuff is kind of designed as a... to steer you off the correct path. Allah identified the enemy of humans very clearly in the Quran many times. And he has a name. And the whole story regarding his parting ways from God and from Adam is just very revealing knowledge to us because it gives us the origin of our problem. Um, what you were mentioning, Brother Tristan, about how uh, otherwise ordinary people, they take everything for granted and they, they attach themselves to this uh, temporal world called the dunya. And I think really, I mean, the susceptibility of humans compared to other creatures, even animals, is that they don't know what they need to do. 
I think they have a kind of essence in there that, like, you know, it's like an innate knowledge, consciousness, awareness of God and your destiny as a human. But it's very difficult when the world around you generates a gaslighting kind of virtual fake reality. And the very word virt- virtual means something that's nearly true, not quite. Um, and so compared to other creatures, like like animals will always know exactly what to do. They're complete submission to Allah alone and the angels no less. And, and then it says also many from mankind in that one verse. It says everything submits to him, right? Everything uh, does saju reverence to him. The sun, the moon, the stars, the trees, the creatures, the angels, and many from mankind. It doesn't say most. The reason why, I think, is because mankind has this, I mean, crazy nature to him that he just cannot exist most often, 99% of the time, without some kind of association or incorporation of something that is attached or ascribed to God that is not anything to do with God whatsoever. And this is so subtle. We always think it's like conjuring the image of, oh, we're just kind of build a statue. No, no, it's it's a bit more subtle than that. That, that can be a, that's still observed today, by the way, but idolatry is the norm for humans. And just so happens to be the only unforgivable sin upon death so I think in order to be real humans, we just have to kind of just let go of all the labels, let go of all the things that just start with a clean slate as if we were just born in a way. And we will be born again eventually, again. But, you know, I think uh, this time is critical to just, you know, <laughs> not give a damn um you know like what brother Willie is doing uh um with showing publicly for everyone to see uh you know risking his life basically to to highlight the discrepancy between muslims quote unquote and the quran and yeah i mean how could you tell when someone's a muslim really by they dress how they talk how they pray, because a hypocrite can do all of those things. And a hypocrite is defined as the worst people by in Allah's sight, because uh, they pretend to be on the right path and they mislead many people. They're basically idolaters at the end of the day, just like how the kind of blasphemers called kafirin, they're they're basically like the oppressors, body uh, min. Uh, it's like two sides to everything, two faces to everything, the sun, the moon, humans, jinns, everything. Um, so it's kind of a very <laughs> long, uh, long off topic. But yeah, the reason why I put that movie in there is because what it shows essentially is that a future on Earth is very bleak and everyone pretends like everything's fine. Uh, the politicians still have uh, football games and they uh, still like spread American patriotism and they tell people that, oh, these aliens actually are very good to us and they're, they they give us technology and they freeing us and we have to pay respect to them. It, it basically describes a future scenario that I think Allah already alludes to, which is the ascribing of a, of a child of God, um, ascribing a child to Allah and... This child is basically like usually comes in the form of these jinns, right? Because uh, Allah says anything you call upon other than God, these jinns are the things that you actually worship, you actually serve. And yeah, the aliens are very demonic looking. They're obviously they're never seen by the public. They're only seen by the politicians. So if you get to a high enough rank, like the president or whatever, you actually get to meet them and they're not very friendly. Um, they're actually, uh, like, if you can imagine a human psychopath, right? Um, the psychopathy of Iblis is 
something you should never underestimate because as much as uh, we despise the shayateen from jinn and ints, I think something you'll quickly realize is that, um, yeah, there, there's an element in our world that, that just, it, it looks at humans with, with like lower than cattle, wants to degrade us below animals. Whereas Allah, who created us as a middle nation, uh, a central community, in the best of forms, I, he, he's constantly telling us, listen, uh, you have shortcomings, but you can achieve great things. You're more than capable. Allah is the ultimate uh, life coach, in a sense, if I can use that word. He's the only one that teaches mankind what he cannot know. That's why every ayah in the Quran, like you said, Brother Tristan, um, this is exactly how I approach the Quran, actually. It gives you the knowledge of something you would never find on your own. You, you need the revelation to tell you. The big picture, the profound kind of everything. Um, I think you were mentioning that, if I can remember exactly. Uh, you know, the idea was, um, yeah, people just kind of, squabble over these minute details which are usually on a false dichotomy red or blue which team do you want you know um but yeah i i uh it's interesting uh i'm not saying it's a great movie or anything but it's it's just interesting how like um we we assume to live in some kind of a society and peaceful more or less world and we just assume everything's over oil or it's over money or sure they they do value those things that's part of the material world the dunya um but in actuality i think that the higher element is is always going to be hidden they even call it a hidden hand and they call it like you know like in john wick they call it like the high table or something there's something calling the shots that we have no access to that sees us where we do not see them that has intimate powers of perception. They can hear our converse conversations and transmit them instantly to their master. And this inner demon in us, I believe, is really, you know, something that is the test of every individual human being. The prophets were no exception to that. Um, yeah, I probably should stop at this point. Yeah, I was going to say also, brothers, uh, that um, I um, used to watch a lot of um, this guy from Australia called Max Egan. And, you know, he's like an older gentleman from uh, Brisbane, uh, New South Wales. And I I think actually uh, Queensland or New South Wales, I'm not sure. But basically, uh, yeah, I, he kind of really started a lot of my awakening in high school to the fact that basically the whole system is fraudulent and corrupt from the very core. Um, and there is this kind of elevation in consciousness. Um, he doesn't really take the kind of God angle that the Quran does, unfortunately. But I remember like seeing his journey come to like, you know, through COVID and everything, how things just became a bit more crystallized that uh, there is a creator, there is a connection to God that every human has at any point in their lives if they choose to, you know, if they choose to acknowledge that, let alone connect with it. And he was saying something, I remember there's a mainstream article right around during coronavirus and basically most of the internet is just bots, it's just trolls. It's just um, AI, like it's it's just automatic kind of responses, um, whatever, via some algorithms or anything like that. And that's why I think, you know, it makes a lot of sense, this kind of invasion theory of the internet being co-opted from maybe not its earliest days, but at least when it started to become actually very useful with the advent of social media. Uh, because before social media, I mean, uh, you didn't really get this kind of real-time, 
communication, access, um, collaboration, you know, like meeting of the minds, exponentially increasing in intelligence because you now can search whatever you want at your fingertips. You can talk to anyone in the world and get instant access to basically like hadith <laughs> reports from anywhere. Uh, near instant access. So I think it's been co-opted um, very much uh, e easy to see, I think, after COVID. Um, and I still have a lot of questions about COVID because for whatever reason, it, it just, it kind of dawns on you after the fact that there's this kind of controlled demolition um, of society, particularly in the West, but I think all over the world, in fact. And when something is too easy to see, you have to question why would they even allow any of this to be out if they didn't have an ulterior motive? And yeah, it kind of it kind of makes sense, you know, like if if they had created this um uh, let's just say like a weapon, right, that you inject into your arm. And this weapon removed an entire generation of people that lived or were born shortly after World War II. That's an entire set of knowledge removed in living memory. And their sons and daughters are not much better off. Um, I'm getting ahead of myself here, but the point being is um, whatever this enemy is, because remember, Trump's words during that ordeal, that live, uh, what is it, <laughs> a live test or something, they, I remember they called it like a live demonstration or something like that, was that we are fighting the invisible enemy. And there is no virus, clearly. There is no isolation at all of this, or any virus for that matter. But there is an invisible enemy. And I would suggest that at any point, any moment, wherever you are, uh, these things are defined by their concealment. They're masters of camouflage and evading detection. And every now and then, you'll notice in your personal life, or you'll notice, you know, some of these people in the world on TV, they have like this uh, very clear element of control over them, like an otherworldly supernatural. It's really just a different type of phenomena. I don't. I wouldn't call it supernatural. It's a nature that's undetectable by our instruments, really. Um, but it is part of a different world, and that's something that, um, like, we can never stop talking about. Um, I feel. When you start to point the finger at the real enemy and not really the finger at the kind of enemies they set up for you where it's like, oh, this particular race or this particular religion or this. No, all that stuff is kind of designed as a to steer you off the correct path. Allah identified the enemy of humans very clearly in the Quran many times. And he has a name. And... The whole story regarding his parting ways from God and from Adam is just very revealing knowledge to us because it gives us the origin of our problem. Um, what you were mentioning, Brother Tristan, about how uh, otherwise ordinary people, they take everything for granted and they, they attach themselves to this uh, temporal world called the dunya. And I think... Really, I mean, the susceptibility of humans compared to other creatures, even animals, is that they don't know what they need to do. I think they have a kind of essence in there that, like, you know, it's like an innate knowledge, consciousness, awareness of God and your destiny as a human. But it's very difficult when the world around you generates a gaslighting kind of virtual fake reality and the very word virtual means something that's nearly true not quite 
Um, and so compared to other creatures, like, like animals will always know exactly what to do. They're complete submission to Allah alone and the angels no less. And, and then it says also many from mankind in that one verse. It says everything submits to him, right? Everything uh, does saju reverence to him. The sun, the moon, the stars, the trees, the creatures, the angels, and many from mankind. It doesn't say most. The reason why, I think, is because mankind has this, I mean, crazy nature to him that he just cannot exist most often, 99% of the time, without some kind of association or incorporation of something that is attached or ascribed to God that is not anything to do with God whatsoever. And this is so subtle. We always think it's like conjuring image of, oh, we're just kind of build a statue. No, no, it's, it's a bit more subtle than that. that. That can be a, that's still observed today, by the way, but idolatry is the norm for humans. And just so happens to be the only unforgivable sin upon death. So, I think in order to be real humans, we just have to kind of just let go of all the labels, let go of all the things that just start with a clean slate as if we were just born in a way. And we will be born again eventually, again. But, you know, I think uh, this time is critical to just, you know, <laughs> not give a damn. Um, you know, like what Brother Ali is doing uh, um, with showing publicly for everyone to see, uh, you know, risking his life basically to to highlight the discrepancy between Muslims, quote unquote, and the Quran. And yeah, I mean, how could you tell when someone's a Muslim, really? By they dress, how they talk. How they pray, because a hypocrite can do all of those things. And a hypocrite is defined as the worst people by in Allah's sight, because uh, they pretend to be on the right path and they mislead many people. They're basically idolaters at the end of the day, just like how the kind of blasphemers called kafirin, they're they're basically like the oppressors, uh, min. Uh, it's like two sides to everything. Two faces to everything. The sun, the moon, humans, jinns, everything. Um, so it's kind of a very <laughs> long, uh, long off topic. But yeah, the reason why I put that movie in there is because what it shows essentially is that a future on Earth is very bleak. And everyone pretends like everything's fine. Uh, the politicians still have uh, football games and they uh, still like spread American patriotism and they tell people that, oh, these aliens actually are very good to us and they're, they, they give us technology and they freeing us and we have to pay respect to them. It, it basically describes a future scenario that I think Allah already alludes to, which is the ascribing of a, of a child of God, um, ascribing a child to Allah and... This child is basically like usually comes in the form of these jinns, right? Because uh, Allah says anything you call upon other than God, these jinns are the things that you actually worship, you actually serve. And yeah, the aliens are very demonic looking. They're obviously they're never seen by the public. They're only seen by the politicians. So if you get to a high enough rank, like the president or whatever, you actually get to meet them and they're not very friendly. Um, they're actually, uh, like, if you can imagine a human psychopath, right? Um, the psychopathy of Iblis is something you should never underestimate because as much as, uh, we despise the shayateen from jinn and ins, I think something you'll quickly realize is that, um, yeah, there, there's an element in our world that, that just, it, it looks at humans with, with like lower than cattle, wants to degrade us below animals. Whereas Allah, who created us, 
is a middle nation, a, a central community. In the best of forms, I he he's constantly telling us, listen, uh, you have shortcomings, but you can achieve great things. You're more than capable. Allah is the ultimate uh, life coach, in a sense, if I can use that word. He's the only one that teaches mankind what he cannot know. That's why every ayah in the Quran, like you said, Brother Tristan, um, this is exactly how I approach the Quran, actually. It gives you the knowledge of something you would never find on your own. You, you need the revelation to tell you. The big picture, the profound kind of everything. Um, I think you're mentioning that, if I can remember exactly. Uh, you know, the idea was, um, yeah, people just kind of squabble over these minute details, which are usually on a false dichotomy, red or blue. Which team do you want? You know. Um, but yeah, I, I uh, it's interesting. Uh, I'm not saying it's a great movie or anything, but it's it's just interesting how like um, we we assume to live in some kind of a society and peaceful, more or less world, and we just assume everything's over oil or it's over money or. Sure, they, they do value those things. That's part of the material world, the dunya. Um, but in actuality, I think that the higher element is, is always going to be hidden. They even call it a hidden hand, and they call it like, you know, like in John Wick, they call it like the high table or something. There's something calling the shots that we have no access to, that sees us where we do not see them, that has intimate powers of perception, they can hear our converse conversations and transmit them instantly to their master. And this inner demon in us, I believe, is really, you know, something that is the test of every individual human being. The prophets were no exception to that. Um, yeah, I probably should stop at this point. With this whole alien invasion theory that I have going here, it just... The way they want to set it up, according to some, some, I don't want to say forums, but things that people I hear talk about, um, the way they have it set up. I don't know if you, um, if any of you brothers watched the movie uh, back in the day, you know, it's, it's a Spider-Man movie. It's not the one that I know Brother Waleed likes with Tobey Maguire, and that's actually my favorite Spider-Man movie. But getting off of that subject to the, to the point of what I'm saying is, is that uh, with this, the newer one with uh, Tom Holland, they had uh, one of the Spider-Mans, or I can't remember in the multiverse, you know, in their multiverse or whatnot, that Mysterio could literally make these hologram or projections, literally show what's happening right in front of your face. It just goes back to what uh, both of you brothers were talking about regarding, like, what happens if it's deeper to the point where... It's literally happening in front of your face, but it's not even real because that's exactly what it's actually coming down to. It's coming down to this fake hologram or this fake hologram that you will see because Mysterio, I don't know if you remember, but Mysterio had all those powers. He can make it look like something was happening in the movie, like some chaos in the world was happening when it really wasn't happening. It was just a delusion. It was all fake and it looked so real to the point where it wasn't truly real. And, you know, I, you know, this is crazy, but the way that they had it almost set up, it was like they want the Western to believe all this science and whatnot to even, they'll even, they could even fake the second coming of Jesus coming back to save us humanity right in front of our very eyes with all this AI and technology, even though it couldn't be further from the truth, but they could use all these things that, really trick the human mind satan is the master decept deceptor however though with us, us brothers and 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 quran alone believers we know that this is this is all uh couldn't be further from the truth and uh you know if they were to fake all that whole thing like all all this technology that they have they could literally lure it in a way to make us they literally see things that aren't actually happening and it's actually heading towards that direction. It goes again to Brother Walid's point about 
uh, the manipulation with AI. But uh, yeah, no, it just had me thinking. I appreciate uh, you guys mentioning this. And that's my uh, part of my two cents on the whole matter. Yeah, of course, brother. Mysterio, he really is kind of an archetypal Satan and the archetypal sorcerer. Because what is sorcery really in the Quran? Sorcery or sahar, magic, is essentially at its essence, it's making something appear to be a certain way that it's not. And this can be gaslighting, this can be mainstream media, this can be what Mysterio is doing with making his holograms, this can be even with the AI that we've been talking about as well. This is, and it's certainly within their capability to fake the second coming of Christ, undoubtedly. And because why would they not? Why would they not? The, the, the ruling elite, they know what the majority of the world is expecting. Hadithan, so-called Muslims, they're expecting Christ to come back. Christians are expecting Christ to come back. Jews are expecting Messiah to come back. They would be fools to not have a fake returning of Christ somewhere woven into their plan. Because they know what their enemy is expecting. And when you know what your enemy is expecting, that's how you win the fight. You can even think of in boxing. When you... When let's say you're sparring somebody, you're fighting. I don't know if any of you have experience with boxing. I know Tristan does, Kenneth does, Igor or anybody else. But when when you're fighting somebody and you you dodge a punch and counter them, let's say they throw the jab, you throw the overhand right over top to counter them. You don't counter them necessarily because you they, they throw the punch, you see it and then move out of the way quickly. No, humans can't react that quick. You throw the overhand right anticipating that they're going to throw a jab. And if you get your prediction right, oh, hey, I know when he shakes his left hand a little bit, he's getting ready to throw a power jab. I'm going to throw an overhand right over it. It's predicting their next move. That gives you power. That allows you to knock somebody's lights out. And they're able to knock the majority of humanity's lights out by predicting or being able to predict and see their, what their opponent is expecting. We expect a Jesus coming back and a Mahdi and all this stuff. That's what most people are wanting to see. So they have definitely woven that into their plan when they're fighting us. And this also made me think as well of, I don't know what Brother Igor thinks of it, what the Quran talks about with the beast of the earth, or Dabt al-Ard, if I'm not mistaken, that's what it's called in Arabic. God specifically says that a beast will come from the earth and it will tell mankind that he was of God's ayats unaware. God's proofs unaware. Now, is Dabd al-Ard, is it this information technology, wireless technology, the internet, this massive gaslighting tsunami of AI content, which is basically distracting you from God, telling you that God doesn't exist, and just overall messing with your mind and trying to hinder you from coming to the truth? Could that be the beast of the earth that God talks about in the Quran, this internet psychopathy that we see? Peace and blessings in the name of the Most High, viewer. My name is Walid Naim, and I am a zealous submitter to the one true God, the creator of all mankind. Do you notice something wrong with the world? Something strange? Despite us having a church, synagogue, and mosque in every neighborhood, how has this entire Western civilization fallen into abject atheism, nihilism, and savagery? Why does life just seem so dull, so meaningless, and so devoid of anything real in the Occidental world? Despite the ubiquitous presence of these religious institutions, why are our so-called Muslim sons in large numbers drinking, smoking, partying, and chasing after women, with no seeming desire to do anything more with their life other than satisfy their base pleasures when God has commanded them to be clean, righteous, and responsible leaders of their community? And why are our hijabi so-called Muslim daughters walking around with tight jeans that reveal their figure with tiktok accounts posting semi-provocative self-absorbed videos of themselves online for the world to see when god has commanded them to lengthen their garments and be modest in their mannerisms what has happened here these young men and women are supposed to be making themselves right before god while raising the next generation of ardent defenders of the holy faith but it seems that Islam features no more in their lives other than a scarf on their head, a Friday fidgeting around in the mosque when their parents force them to go against their will, or a decorative hanger in their car. At this rate, if God allows us to continue going down the road it is, then Islam and the Quran will become pretty much non-existent in the lives of most of our descendants, if it wasn't already non-existent now. If we do not take a stand soon, 
in a few generations our children's children will likely be indistinguishable from the secular West. Is that the kind of world we want to live in? Our kids to live in? A world practically devoid of the remembrance of the one God and all things sane? I obviously can't speak for you, but for my own self, I can personally say, count me out of it. I'm not going to sit here and just watch my brothers and sisters, those who claim to believe in God alone, believe in Judgment Day, his prophets and angels, and all the other aspects of this holy creed, get duped into going to hell. I'm not going to let this happen without at least something of an effort on my end to reroute this dark trajectory. So, again, how in the world do we end up here? There is a mosque in practically every neighborhood in the West, and no shortage of donations that get dropped in their boxes. They have had lots of funding, lots of time, and unquestioning support from their respective congregations, yet somehow have been run over by the secular atheist. All of their so-called Muslim children go to the atheist, secular public schools for most of their week to be taught beliefs that are completely incompatible with the Qur'an. And we wonder why they have ended up the way they are. If these houses, and by these houses I mean the mosques, were truly of God that were doing everything right, then why would our Lord let them get so decisively trampled upon by their enemies? Why do the wicked have all of the reins of power here? Clearly, something is not adding up. Well, it is my thesis here today that the vast, vast majority of mosques that exist in this world today have lost their way and follow a religion which is completely foreign to the Qur'an. This is why they have failed so miserably in the West, and it seems that God has forgotten them. In truth, the real reason behind their shortcoming is that they, and many of us, have forgotten God himself, which is why he has left us here collecting our bitter receipts. So, what are my exact criticisms of the mosques today? As a Muslim, and a man committed to the truth above all else, what are my personal gripes with their institution, which claims to be for God? The first glaring problem I can think of is that the majority of people who call themselves Muslim have allied themselves with a body of literature that is foreign to the word of God, treating it equal to and in fact above the Quran itself. Of course, I am talking about the Hadith. Listen, the facts are this. There is no justification within the Quran which tells us to follow this Hadith stuff, which came hundreds of years after the Prophet Muhammad died, and therefore he could have had no ability to oversee what people have said about him, and determine if it is true or false. It is now becoming crystal clear, especially in the last 10 to 20 years, that many, many things that have been ascribed to him in their most quote-unquote authoritative texts, which they call their Sahih Hadiths, are forgeries that directly contradict God's final revelation. To take these words of men, i.e. the Hadith, and hold them to be equally authoritative to the words of God would be breaking the first and most important commandment, which is to worship God alone, making no equals with him. To say that these supposed words of Muhammad, which are not even Muhammad's own words, but simply very doubtful rumors about what people who existed hundreds of years after him say he said, that have been decided upon by the scholars as authoritative holds equal or in fact any weight in our faith comparable to the verbatim words of God himself, the Holy Quran, is idolatry. You are exalting man's words to the status of divinity, which should only be given to God's words. Nothing comes even close to the Quran because God, the creator of the heavens and the earth, is its author. This includes the Hadith too, which pales in comparison and is superfluous to the glorious Quran. If you are interested in seeing a full refutation of the Hadith, you may watch my video titled A Defense of Prophet Muhammad, David Wood and Hadith Exposed, which is linked below. In it, along with refuting and putting in his place the worst opponent of Islam on the internet, Mr. David Wood, I also expose how the Hadith is completely contradictory to the Quran and the source of much of the Muslim world's problems. It is a two-hour long documentary where I seek to demonstrate the true character of Muhammad in the Qur'an, defending his history and personality with primary source quotations. I clear the last prophet of God's name from the people who have tarnished his reputation the most, which are certain types of Christians, and, sad to say, hadith-following Muslims, which have said many terrible things about him. No, Muhammad was not a money-hungry, tyrannical warlord who married a six-year-old girl. He was a shy, humble, meek man who married adult women, had compassion for even his worst enemies, and oftentimes had a tough time even standing up for himself out of fear of hurting other people's feelings. This is all demonstrated in detail in my video. Once again, 
The link for that will be in the description under the tab, The True Character of Muhammad in the Quran. So that is the first problem with the mosques, the reason for which I feel they have been forsaken by God, their adoption of an apostate literature which contradicts their foundational scripture. The second point of contention I have with many of the mosques is their seeming unwillingness to say anything controversial which may make them face persecution from their government. The fact that 9-11 was not only an inside job, but the fact that no planes hit the Twin Towers on that day, and the whole charade was a hoax designed by the governments of the world to forever frame the Muslim people as terrorists and justify invasions in our countries, should be taught to every man, woman, and child. This great fraud of the September attacks has left such a lasting, enduring reputation on every brown person, and Muslim in general, that it should be discussed in every mosque. Our people are not responsible for that crime, but it was the governments of the world who carried out that plot and framed us for it. 9-11 is just only one small example, though. There are many, many other quote-unquote conspiracy theories, which are really just conspiracy facts, avoided by the mosques due to their controversy, like the fact that the monetary system in the West is an ungodly scam based on usury, the fact that the so-called healthcare system is a predatory empire which doesn't try to cure anybody but instead makes money off of human suffering, the fact that sodomite propaganda is being promoted to the masses, including our children, and the fact that the thing which I will call the C-1-9-er, to avoid censorship, was a hoax perpetrated by the powers that be to greatly expand their police state, censorship incentives, and surveillance systems worldwide in order to create their new world order, and much more. These governments that have occupied our lands are de facto terrorist regimes, and the mosques seem to say nothing of it. They appear to be more concerned with not being labeled extremists while they live their comfortable, well-funded lives, avoiding topics that are hard to deal with due to the abject persecution they bring. That is my second problem with them. They're at the very least lack of awareness, or if not, perhaps lack of willingness to address the real geopolitical situation going on in the world. And lastly, my third trouble with the mainstream mosques, which can also be put into the category of conspiracy facts, is their complete ignorance on the true nature of the earth. It may sound as a shock to you, my viewer, that the Quran, the Bible, and in fact all of the ancient scriptures teach the earth is flat and stationary. This is the only model of the world which is compatible with those texts, and also scientifically provable. This flat earth conspiracy, which should really be called the globe earth conspiracy, is one of the biggest lies of the modern world we are told, and goes in line with what I said earlier about the endemic corruption of the governments of the world. Everything you have been told about where you live is a fabrication, and the space agencies are a shameless hoax. For a fully detailed presentation on the subject of Flat Earth, where I demonstrate the science, the history, the philosophy, the verses in the Bible and Quran proving it, and much more, you can read my book titled The Flat Earth Manifesto, which is linked in the description. This work runs to nearly 1,200 pages and is practically a textbook on not only the topic of flat earth, but the subject of physics proper, and I expose the biggest fraudulent religion of the West, which is science worship, otherwise known as scientism. As with all of my work, it too is available for free. No, you do not live on a pathetic speck of dust spinning around in the middle of nowhere in space. You live in a brilliant, intelligently designed terrarium created by God and are at the center of the universe. Again, to learn more, the link to the Flat Earth Manifesto will be in the description. Those right there are my three biggest scores against the mosques of today. There are more points I could bring up, but these are the major ones. These are the controversies which have estranged me from the rest of the so-called Muslim world. Believe me when I say that I would love to join them and that it hurts me so deeply that I have to pit myself up against the very institution I was born and raised in, the mosques I attended from childhood whose carpets upon which I walked, stood, prayed, and listened to the preaching in my earliest years. But that is the price to pay for the truth. My commitment to God and what is right is more important than my emotional attachments to a place that was once dear to my heart. Simply put, this is why I think God has forsaken us. This is why I think that the mosques have been steamrolled by the secular atheist. It is because most of us have abandoned the word of God, neglected preaching the truth, and instead chosen comfort over courageous action. That is my thesis to why this great falling away in the West has taken place. 
If this sounds shocking to you, if it sounds so unbelievable that the majority of the so-called Muslim world could be deceived so badly, then I simply have these verses in the Quran to show you. In the name of God, the Almighty and the Merciful. Chapter 6, verse 116. And if thou obey most of those upon the earth, they will lead thee astray from the path of God. They follow only assumption, and they are only guessing. Chapter 25, verse 30. And the messenger will say, O oh my Lord, my people took this Quran as a thing abandoned. God has really predicted this a millennia ago. He knew that the people who follow what is really right are few and far between, that the majority of men and women are led astray, and the people who claim to love Muhammad the most, i.e. mainstream Muslims, would abandon the glorious Quran. God has revealed to us a thousand years ago that this all would be the case. It is my mission, therefore, by the will of God, to band together with like-minded believers who have understood the truth and work together to build a new institution from the ground up, founded upon prudent fear. We need to start fresh, start anew. We need to build a new mosque where people can hear the unfiltered preaching from the Quran alone, where men and women can get married, where children can play and be educated in the truth, and where the name of the Most High God, without any associate partners, can be remembered. We need a group of highly dedicated men who will raise and defend this institution with their own hands if need be, and go out into the world warning people of the punishment of God, bearing witness to the truth of his oneness. That is my mission, my viewer. If you found that this mission of mine has touched your heart and is something you want to get involved with, then feel free to contact me in the email below. I am located in Ontario, Canada, and I'm looking forward to form a community with like-minded believers who want to contribute to this great cause. I am neither a nationalist nor racially biased. If you follow the Quran alone and believe in the truth, then as far as I'm concerned, you are my brother in the faith. I prefer you over someone of my own kindred who denies God and commits corruption in the earth. My loyalties are primarily ideological, not racial. Remember, my viewer, that this life is short. Everything we do and don't do is recorded by God and will either bear witness for us or against us on the day of judgment. Hell is eternal, and I do not know about you, but as for me, I want to meet my Creator in the best state possible. I want to spend my life struggling to build up my people, the true Muslims, so that God may be pleased with me on that day. If you are interested in that, then feel free to join me. If not, then find something else good to do which will prepare you for your appointment with the Most High. That is where we are all going anyway. With that being said, I say peace and God bless to all of you good people. Take care, everyone.